Okay, so working away on the Camaro. Just uh, got the transmission lines all in place. Uh, these were again the pre-bent lines, but um, these did not fit that well. I had to do a lot of bending myself to get these routed uh, the way they need to be. I'm not sure what happened, but um, I got them bent there and they run along the oil pan. Had to bend them further down here because they were hitting the header. Thought we were in the clear, got that lines all figured out, headers fit. Then we install the mini high torque starter. Well, now that's hitting the uh, header. Actually, I can't even install the header right now with that starter in there. I'm gonna have to install the headers and then install the starter. Uh, these starters, I believe, can be clocked. You can rotate them one way or the other, but that isn't gonna help the header because it's not hitting here, here. It's actually hitting right here on this piece there. So we're either gonna have to figure out a different starter or we're gonna have to modify this one. I don't know if we can cut this aluminum enough to clear it or not. But uh, we'll have to see more issues with these headers, guys. I don't know. Okay, so I wasn't going to do a separate video on this a mini high torque starter that we got. This is from Proform. And we just got this at the local Advance slash CarQuest. Um, it was, I think, about 150 bucks. Not cheap by no means, but uh, it so it's, it's supposed to fit our application. I know um, most starters. You can see this is a straight pattern. Most starters are are clocked or offset. I guess they call that where they use um, a bolt here and then a bolt over here. But uh, this the, this mini starter. I think most mini starters I've ever seen use the two bolts in the block that are straight across. I'm not sure if all blocks have them or not, but I know it said something to 86, 67 to 86 maybe or something for this starter to fit. Um, I believe we have the 168 tooth flywheel in there. And so in order to get that to work, we gotta slide the starter all the way to the outside. Um, you can use these two holes here. You can see the ones we've scratched up because we've been uh, test fitting it right here. You can use these here, and I believe that's the smaller flywheel, like 153 or 52 tooth or something like that. But we use these two outside ones. We gotta slide the starter all the way back. Um, what that does is with the headers that we have, I had to go in here and clearance this corner because it was hitting the the one of the header tubes so I probably took more than I needed but I just wanted to have a good clearance there uh, second thing we're running into is um, it will bolt, bolt up there now uh, no problems problem is one of the header tubes runs right across this right here right across the solenoid so uh, one other thing with these mini starters is you can clock these things. As you can see there's a few different holes there. And there's three bolts on this plate and you can clock this starter. So we can rotate this up a little bit and get it away from the header tube. Which is what I'm gonna do right now. Another reason I wanted to make this video on this starter is because we had problems with the first starter we had. The directions are telling you uh, when, you, when you take this, this piece off, this aluminum block, that you have to take the bolts out of the starter here and take the starter apart. Well, you don't have to do that and do not do that because we snapped one of these bolts right here. 
we snapped one off. And there's no reason to go inside this starter. They talk about this, um, this hidden bolt somewhere inside the starter, but there is no hidden bolt, guys. I think the instructions are for an older model uh, starter, maybe before they were milling these out to be able to get to this one bolt here. You need an Allen wrench to get in there to get that bolt up. But anyway, we got to clock this thing and at the same time we have to make another adjustment. When we bolt it up there, the flywheel clearance is really tight. It's a, it's a tight ten thousandths of an inch. So we got to move this starter back where this gear needs to go back. So in the kit with the starter they come with um, spacers. And when you unbolt this block, you can slide the block the one way out. So that will move the starter back, the gear, and we'll have the clearance that we need so the flywheel don't um, come in contact with the starter when the starter's not running. Okay, so we get this plate off. You're going to need an Allen wrench to get this one bolt in here and I think that's the hidden bolt. It used to be a hidden bolt but now they must be assembling it or making it different so they don't need to have that hidden bolt. Next thing is you've got two bolts back here to take off. You might want to have the starter up in the air when you do that or hold the block on there so it don't fall out. There's a gear in there. These bolts are tighter. I've had this off so if you gotta put a little muscle into them bolts don't be afraid to do that. Okay, with the bolts out, you can see this block can move and you can clock the starter differently. Well, we need to clock it on this hole right here and there's three, there's three holes in the block for each one of these mounts. So we're gonna use one of the other mounts um, you do have to remove these gasket or this gasket here. This gasket has to come off because you're going to put a spacer in there to get the right clearance. So once you get your gasket removed, here's the little spacer and apparently the new gasket for the starter. This is going to push that that block outward and we're going to get the clearance we need on the starter gear. Now when you when you put the spacer on there's another spacer right here that has to go inside the block because there's a there's a bearing right here and when you push this out this bearing is going to have all kinds of space to to move and you don't you don't want all that end play. So you take this spacer here and that drops into the the block. So once this spacer is in the block here, you're going to drop it on Now I got to find the clock that I need Okay I believe that's it. We need this hole right here. So I'm going to drop my Allen bolt in there. Not going to snug that up. I'm going to put my other bolts in here. Back into the back side. You always want to, when you do something like this, you always start all your bolts. You don't want to tighten one down because you might not be able to get it in there. You might wreck the threads. 
So get all your bolts started, then snug them down. There is a torque on these bolts, it says in instructions what it needs to be. So make sure you torque them. Right now I'm going to just set this up in place, make sure it's going to fit with the new clocking. Also got to measure the space on the flywheel or flex plate. Okay guys, so one final test fit here. And we're looking good. You can see we got good clearance there on the one tube that I notched. And also, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get you a shot of it. Oh, well, there you go. We got a decent amount of space there between the solenoid and that one tube. It was almost right on. It was almost right on that solenoid before I clocked it or reclocked it. So we're looking good guys. I mean, this is a pretty darn tight fit under here. Um, you're not going to get anything but a mini starter, I don't think, under here. We've got the clearance we need. Fly, we don't know if I can show that to you or not, but we got... It's a tight 45 thousandths. Uh, minimum clearance there is uh, 40 thousandths. So I believe we got enough clearance. It looks good the way it is there. They do have shims in the kit if we need to shim that. But I think we're going to be, I think we're going to be good with that, with no shims. So we're going to run that. Like I said, I got to take it back out. We got to torque all them bolts. Uh, one other thing is we did try the factory cover that covers the torque converter and flex plate and it looks like it's going to work with everything. It might need to be clearanced because of this aluminum oil pan we went with but it's going to work with that starter and everything so looks like we're, we're good to go guys. Okay so I got the starter out and I found a little bit more clearance issues happening right here. I seen there was some paint transfer. You can see where it's crushed there. So I'm going to have to come in here. I'm going to grind this out a little bit. This is just that, that uh, spacer we stuck in there. So I'm going to grind that out a little bit and then I'll uh, reinstall it here see if we get any more transfer. Um, there was a little bit on here but I don't know if that just fell on there when I was installing it but I'm going to clearance this out a little bit, we'll reinstall it, see what happens. It's tight getting it up, getting it up in there. But anyway guys, that's going to do it for this one. All I got to do is torque them bolts now, and then torque the mounting bolts. And that's in the instructions of your starter should be. I'll see you guys in the next one.